Secrets Grandma here. I have two stories here for you today. I have The Elves and the Shoemaker and The Bremen Town Musicians. There was once a shoemaker who, through no fault of his own, became so poor that at last he had nothing left but just enough leather to make one pair of shoes. So he cut out the shoes at night so as to set about work upon them in the next morning, and he had a good conscience, so he laid down quietly on his bed, committed himself to heaven, and fell asleep. In the morning, after he said his prayers, he went to go to work, and he found the shoes were made and finished and standing on his table. He took the shoes, and he was much astonished, and he did not know what to think, and he took the shoes in his hand to examine them more nearly, and they were so well made that every stitch was in its right place, just as if they'd come from the hand of a master craftsman. Soon after, a purchaser entered, and the shoes fitted him very well, and he gave more than the usual price for them, so the shoemaker had enough money to buy leather for two pairs of shoes. So he cut them out that night, and he intended to set to work the next morning with a fresh spirit, but that was not to be, for when he got up, they were already finished. And a customer, even was not lacking, who gave him so much money that he was able to buy enough leather for four new pairs. So early the next morning he found the four pairs also finished. And so it always happened, whenever he cut out in the evening and left the work, left, it was worked up in the morning, so that he sh soon was in the way of making a good living, and in the end became very well to do. One night, not long before Christmas, when the shoemaker had finished cutting out, and before he went to bed, he said to his wife, how would it be if we were to sit up tonight just at long to see who it is that does us this service? So his wife agreed, and she set a candle to burn, and they both hid in the corner of the room behind some coats that were hanging up, and they began to watch. As soon as it was midnight, they saw come in two neatly formed naked little men who seated themselves before the shoemaker's table, and they took up the work that was already prepared, and they began to stitch and to pierce and to hammer so cleverly and so quickly with their little fingers that the shoemaker's eyes could scarcely follow them, so full of wonder was he. And they never left off until everything was finished and standing ready on the table. And then they jumped up and ran off. So the next morning, the shoemaker's wife said to her husband, Those little men have made us rich. We ought to show ourselves grateful. With all their running about and having nothing to cover themselves, they must be very cold. I'll tell you what, I will make little shirts and coats and waistcoats and breeches for them and knit each of them a pair of stockings and you shall make them each a pair of shoes. Well, the husband consented willingly and at night when everything was finished, they laid the gifts together on the table instead of the cut out work and they placed themselves so that they could observe how the little men would behave. When midnight came, they rushed in, ready to set to work, but there they found, instead of the pieces of prepared leather, the neat little garments put ready for them, and they stood for a moment in surprise, and then they testified the greatest delight. And with great swiftness, they took up the pretty garments, and they slipped them on, singing, What spruce and dandy boys are we? No longer cobblers we shall be. And they hopped and danced about, jumping over the tails, chairs and tables, and at last they danced out the door. From that time they were never seen again, but it always went well for the shoemaker as long as he lived, and whatever he took in hand prospered. And now, the Bremen Town Musicians. There was once a donkey whose master made him carry sacks to the mill for many a long year but whose strength began to fail so that each day it came to find him less capable of work. Then his master began to think of turning him out, but the donkey, guessing that something was in the wind that boded him no good, ran away, taking the road to Bremen, for here, he thought, he might get an engagement as a town musician. 
When he had gone a little way, he found a hound lying by the side of the road, panting as if he had run a long way. Now, hold fast, what are you so out of breath about? said the donkey. Oh, dear, said the dog, now I am old, and I get weaker every day and can do no good in the hunt, so my master was going to have me killed. I have made my escape, but now how am I to gain a living? I'll tell you what, said the donkey, I'm going to Bremen to become a town musician. You may as well go with me and take up music, too. I can play the lute, and you can beat the drum. So the dog consented, and they walked on together. It was not long before they came to a cat sitting in the road, looking dismal as three wet days. Now, what's the matter with you, old kitty, said the donkey. I'd like to know who could be cheerful when his neck is in danger, said the cat. Now that I am old, my teeth are getting blunt, and I would rather sit by the oven and purr than run around after mice. And my mistress wanted to drown me, so I took myself off. But good advice is scarce, and I do not know what is to become of me. Well, go with us to Bremen, said the donkey, and become a town musician. You understand serenading. Well, the cat thought well of this idea and went with them accordingly. After that, the tree, three travelers passed by a yard, and a rooster was perched on the gate, crowing with all his might. Oh, your cries are enough to piece bone and marrow, said the donkey. What is the matter? I foretold good, letter, good weather for Lady Day, and all the shirts may be washed and dried, and now, on Sunday morning, company is coming, and the mistress told the cook that I must be made into soup. And this evening my neck is to be wrung, so that I am crowing with all my might while I can. Well, you'd better go with us, Mr. Rooster, said the donkey. We are going to Bremen. At any rate, we'll be better than dying. You have a powerful voice, and when we are all performing together, it will have very good effect. So the rooster consented, and all four went together. But Bremen was too far off to be reached in one day, and toward evening they came to a wood where they determined to pass the night. The donkey and the dog lay down under a large tree. The cat got the safest up among the branches, and the rooster flew to the top, as that was the safest place for him. Before he went to sleep, he looked all around him to the four points of the compass and determined in the distance a little light shining. And he called out to his companions that there must be a house not far off where he could see a light. So the donkey said, We had better get up and go there, for these are uncomfortable quarters. The dog began to fancy a few bones not quite bare um, and that would do him good. And they set off in the direction of the light, and it grew larger and brighter until last it led them to a robber's house, all lighted up. And the donkey, being the biggest, went up to the window and he looked in. What do you see, said the dog. What do I see, said the donkey. There's a table set out with splendid eatables and drinkables, and robbers sitting it and making themselves very comfortable. That would just suit us, said the rooster. Yes, indeed, I wish we were there, said the donkey, and they consulted together how it could be managed to get the, do the robbers out of the house, and at last they hit on a plan. The donkey was to pay place his forefeet on the window sill, and the dog would get on the donkey's back, and the cat on the top of the dog, and lastly the rooster to fly up and purchase on this cat's head. And when that was done, and a given signal, they all began to perform their music. The donkey brayed, and the dog barked, and the cat mewed, and the rooster crowed, and they all burst through the room, breaking all the panes of glass. The robbers fled at the dreadful sound. They thought it was some goblin, and fled to the wood in utmost terror. Then the four companions sat down to table and made free with the remains of the meal, and feasted as if they had been hungry for months. And then they had finished, they put out the lights, and they each sought out his sleeping place to suit his nature and habits. The donkey laid himself down outside on the dunghill, and the dog behind the door, and the cat on the hearth by the warm ashes, and the rooster settled himself 
into the rooster loft, and they were all tired from their long journey. They fell fast asleep. When midnight drew near, and the robbers from afar saw that no light was burning and everything was quiet, their captain said to them that he thought they had run away without reason, telling them one of them to go and reconnoiter. So one of them went and found everything quiet. And he went to the kitchen to strike a light. And there, taking the glowing, firing eyes of the cat for burning coals, he held a match to them to, in order to kindle them. But the cat, not seeing the joke, flew into his face, spitting and scratching. And he cried out in terror, and he ran to get out the back door. But the dog, who was lying there, ran at him and bit his leg. And as he was rushing through the yard by the dunghill, the donkey struck out and gave him a great kick with his hind feet. And then the rooster, who'd been awakened with the noise and felt quite brisk, cried out, cock a doodle doo And then the robber got back as quick as he could to his captain. And he said, oh dear, in that house there's a gruesome witch. And I felt her breath and her long nails in my face. And by the door there stands a man who stabbed me in the leg by a knife. And by the yard there lies a black specter who beat me with his wooden club. And above the roof there sits the justice who cried, bring that rogue, rogue here. So I ran away from the face to a place as fast as I could. From that time, the robbers never ventured to that house, and the four Bremen town musicians found them so well off where they were that they stayed. And the per person who related this tale is still living, as you might see. Well, I think that's enough for this time. And I will see you um, in a few minutes when I read another uh, chapter of Little House in the Big Woods. Bye-bye.